So once again, welcome everyone to tonight's competition for images of or about heat. Our judge tonight is Marianne Sutton, or Sutton. Marianne is both a past VP for competitions and past president of Northern Virginia Photographic Society. She's a 1995 graduate of the Washington School of Photography and has augmented that training with many photography and Adobe Photoshop courses, including Freeman Patterson's Photography and Visual Design Workshop. Nice. She's, worked, she's worked as a professional photographer and videographer all the way up through 2009 and for several years ran a portrait studio in her home. She's experienced as a judge and critique leader, and she's completed Joe Miller's seminar on judging in December of 2006. Her images have won numerous awards in the Northern Virginia Photographic Society, ribbons from Vienna photography shows, where she's even won Best in Show, and several images have been juried into the Art League of Alexandria's monthly exhibits. She's also won a prestigious Equal Award in 2002 and maintained a bin for two years. Obviously, she's qualified to be a judge tonight, so we definitely appreciate her participation in helping us out tonight. In fact, her image all truckered out won first place in the AAA World 2009 Photo Contest. No small feat. Marianne and her husband Dick live in the northern Shenandoah Valley area where she has organized and leads a photography club in her active adult community, frequently teaching and encouraging novice photographers. While she continues to do some professional work in photo restoration, portraits, and fine art, greeting cards and note cards, she spends the majority of her photographic time honing her craft while working on photographic art and trying to stay current with her favorite software, Photoshop. Tonight, Marianne Sutton. Hi. Hello. Thank you for the, the clapping there. <laughs> which I couldn't hear, of course, but I saw it. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good, good. I just want to mention before we get started, if that's okay. Absolutely. You, uh, that you have some creative folks in your club, uh, and I was impressed. Uh, I did look at them today, so I will have uh, some notes already. Hopefully that'll speed us along a tad. Um, I do tend to look for um, the four C's, which everybody's probably familiar with, the craftsmanship, which is also includes presentation, but we're not dealing with that anymore. Composition, creativity, and communication, meaning primarily what does the photographer want the viewer to see? Um, I do uh, want to look at every image with uh, where it succeeds, as well as where maybe some more effort would change things a little bit. So um, I'll do my best to be um, fair and, um, and easy. So we can get started whenever you're ready. All right. And I'm so open for questions at the end, if you'd like to. Great job. There frequently is some, some questions, so thank you for that. I'll go ahead and roll through the images, give everyone a, a review of the entries. Okay, we're back to the beginning. Okay, uh, I don't know, I don't have any titles, but this particular one is a glass blowing uh, situation, which you can see, of course, the, the amazing heat coming from that. Uh, I found it interesting. I found it, uh, the color and exposure was quite good uh, and got some nice details in the dark portions, which is not easy to do. Um, I would like to suggest, um, that the top right and the bottom right are a little distracting. Pardon? I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. The, bo the bottom right where there's a pipe uh, is, is just light enough to take your eye right down there as well as it almost looks 3D since it's dark behind it. It looks like it's gonna come out of the picture frame. So I would just suggest burning the, the top and bottom in a little bit. Um, 
The biggest problem I had with this, however, was finding where the subject would be the heat and the glass, and they're not real sharp. So you can go ahead. I found this very interesting and very creative. Uh, I am assuming it's a composite. And it shows heat in a different way as far as steam goes. Uh, it has very nice composition. He's not right in the middle, which would have still been fine, but I, I like it the way it is. Um, you can tell that the man is walking forward, which because there's just enough light to be able to tell that. Um, the sharpness is good. Uh, the only problem I really had with this was the right hand. Uh, it looks like sort of a double thing as if it might be moving. But since the feet aren't moving equally, I think I would try to clone out that little bit of shadow or whatever that is. Um, and it was, oh yes, the yellow at the very bottom left, if you could tone that down, yes. Tone that down or clone it in to match the right side. I would suggest that as well. Nice shot. This made me hungry. Um, the pizza and the fire and the pizza oven, I'm assuming. Um, I like the composition on this particularly because it was not square on and you've got the pizza a little bit to the right and the fire a little bit to the left and the picture frame is very balanced. Um, you don't need the, uh, to see every detail on the pizza such as the left of the pizza there, it, that's fine. Um, the fire is good. It's very sharp on the pizza part, but not as much on the back, but you didn't need that. And uh, it's sharp enough to certainly know what it is. Um, and I, I like this one as well. Go ahead. This too was um, very creative. I don't know if this person is playing with fire or holding the fire off or what, and maybe it makes no difference at all. Uh, it may be a light painting situation, which if so is very good. That's hard to do. Um, I, I never did it outside, although I'd like to. Um, anyway, the, uh, the composition on this one is very good and the circle being prominent the way it is, uh, is I, it takes your eye right to the brightest spot, which is right behind the gentleman. And, and you, I think your eye goes everywhere that was intended. I like the fact that it's probably the 16 by nine proportion rather than an 11 by 14. It gives it the motion that you want from left to right uh, without looking square onto it. And it's nice to be it in sort of a panorama. Uh, the back black background, I noticed almost everybody had a black background, which is terrific for this kind of photography. But this one I found rather unique and, uh, and nice. I, I have never seen such a thing. I can picture a volcano, but not a crater as such with fire in it. So I found that very interesting. I liked the... Um, the composition of it. I also like the exposure. You primarily want to get where the fire is reflecting, but it also is, was cool to me to see that the, uh, the smoke from the fire is going up to the top right a little bit, and you can still see stars, which makes that a little bit more interesting. I don't know if you need as much of the foreground. Um, down at the bottom, you can tell that there's foliage there, um, but unless you're going to give us some real details, I don't know that you, you in, in, there's no detail at the bottom right, for example. Um, it might have been fine to open that up with a little bit of brightness, but it's fine the way it is. But I just wanted to mention, oh, and the horizon is straight. So that's great. And that's all. So you want me to show you what first and second is? Yes, ma'am. And uh, yes, so we do first and second place. And let me get out of single mode. Okay. The first place is uh, the man in the steamy tunnel. Yes. And the second place is the man playing with the fire or stuff. Right. 
circle one. Mm -hmm. All right. So second place tonight, Susan Berry. Susan here tonight. I don't see that she is. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought it was a very creative display of quote fire with the light painting. All right, well done to Susan. Leading up to our first place winner tonight, Tammy Smith, who also does not appear to be online. Maybe we need to institute a must be present to win rule. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. But anyway, <laughs> congratulations to Tammy as well on her first place win. Let's go ahead and move her down to the best of show. I just did a bad thing. Let me fix this real quick. Okay, moving into novice monochrome. Sure, we've won the images here real quick. Okay, three images. I thought this one told a nice story. And if you're gonna have a sign with words on it, make sure that particularly if it's this prominent, make sure that you can read them because it, it really frustrates the viewer if you can't. Uh, and this is great. I could read everything. Uh, I think it tells a lovely story with all the gear right there. And the composition is interesting. The tonal range from bright to dark is very good. And the sharpness is very good as well. Um, uh, I had another thing when, uh, oh, the little white mark at the top. Uh, yes, might just want to tone that down or clone it out. And that was it. Nice job. I didn't know whether this was not a large enough file or whether it was um, blurry all over. Uh, I, I can tell what it is, obviously. It's a dog who's panting from the heat. Uh, I would like to see a little bit more sharpness somewhere, particularly around the tongue, um, and maybe some catch light in that right eye. But uh, other than that, it, uh, you know, it is lovely composition, and it looks like the exposure is pretty well done, too. I did have a fun thing to suggest, and that would be to leave some of the color in the tongue uh, and just very, very lightly have have that in color and see what you like. It just would be a little different. Cute dog. Uh, this one is a nice idea and I like the composition and I like the rays. Uh, the sky at the brightest part has been totally um, burned out. So if there were more details up there, uh, we wouldn't really know. And that's done because of the fact that the rest of the um, image is so dark. So it's going to try to expose for those and the light ones will perhaps be a little blown out. So I would suggest if you, you probably don't get a chance to do this one again, but you could play with it. Um, I don't think there are any details in the white to, to bring out. But next time, uh, take more than one. Uh, and that way you can expose for maybe the brighter part as well as the dark part and maybe even put them together. That's it. Okay, we got a first place winner. Yes, the fire men's gear. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that one goes to Tammy Smith again. Two for two tonight. Congratulations to Tammy. We'll go ahead and move that to our best of show gallery. Moving into intermediate color. Got a few more entries here.
All right, we're back at the beginning. Um, I thought this was a lovely composition, and I have a feeling that it was selected out of something and put on the black background, which was good. Um, you can almost tell that because there's none of the light that's on the peppers or on the on the background at all. Um, and it was a good job of the selections. The composition is nice. The uh, sharpness of the peppers is is nice. Uh, of course, peppers can give heat, so I can understand why that one was chosen the way it was, um, because you're really going for the heat and not the reality of the peppers. So I, it was very good. You can go on. There's good contrast with the dark background and the flame. Um, I don't quite understand what the thing in the middle is. Um, and it's not sharp, so I can't really discern except for portions of it that are sharp. Um, I did find that the um, the white spot again that might not have had any detail because uh, fire is obviously going to be very bright. So you can you can almost expect that. Um, because I didn't recognize um, that too much, uh, I, I just felt like it stood out as the subject of this. Uh, and I can tell that the flame, of course, has the theme, but I couldn't really, um, even though I was curious, I couldn't tell exactly what that was. And, and the right side of it particularly would have been nice or the top portion of that inside thing if it was sharp. Yeah. This was clever and creative, especially leaving the seeds in there. Um, but anyway, somebody got got clever with the, the letters. I did find that it had a nice composition. Uh, you smile when you look at it. And um, the window shadow actually gives it a little bit more um, pizzazz, I think, because the light is falling on these um, letters a little differently and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. So that was a nice job. The boiling corn uh, is a very good idea and I like the fact that it was broken or else those are two end pieces, it doesn't matter. But a lot of times we take a picture of corn on the cob and it's just the the regular cob, so this was different and I like that. Um, the boiling water is hard to do um, and there is some sharpness at the top um, or where the boiling bubbles are, but there's an awful lot of it that is not sharp. So one of the suggestions I had was to crop almost up to the V at the bottom. You see the dark triangle that comes up to the, yeah, right. I would go down a little lower so you could see the um, the V and the underside of the V, but you don't need all of that blurriness down at the bottom. I think your eye would look for the sharpness if it wasn't there. Um, what else did I say? That's really all I get. I love the comp composition on that and it was a nice try. Okay. If I had not known the theme, I wouldn't have understood this picture. Um, but knowing it, I can appreciate that they would be hot inside those uniforms and the fans are pretty. Um, I would suggest, the composition is quite nice. Um, you ha you, it makes you wonder what they're looking at. Uh, and the background is very bright. If, if that could be toned down, I think that it would be a nicer image and maybe even cropping a little bit of that off because of the white, whiteness in the back. Um, there's a white mark on the right-hand side that stands out prominently right uh, across from the woman's arm. I would get rid of that. And I wanna mention while I'm looking at this at her left hand, one of the, right, one of the rules as such is to try not to crop off at a joint uh, and a hand is a little difficult in that regard, and, and they're 
chances are it wasn't anything this person could do. But if, if we take pictures of people, try to keep that in mind because we um, don't want to cut them off at the knee uh, and things like that. And this hand, uh, because the other one is all there, it's just a little sad that this one was not also. Very pretty um, women and nice shot. I thought this was extremely creative. Um, we've all felt like this at one time or another. Uh, I think it's just burning memories here. Uh, you don't need to be able to have the letter in focus because we don't want to know who it is or what they said. It's the idea of getting rid of it. And chances are we've all thought of that at one time or another. Uh, the fact that the flame and the uh, candle and what it's sitting on is all sharp uh, is, is exactly you know, what we need. I found it interesting and creative. It certainly tells a story. Uh, there are no distractions in it. The simplicity of it makes it um, very good as well. And I'm glad there was a black background on that. This one is also interesting because of the different colors of smoke. Um, you don't usually see that either, and I'm assuming this is light painting, um, but it's very nice, and the uh, composition is nice. The sharpness starts down in the left side and moves up to the right where it gets blurry, so your eye follows that. Uh, and of course, the brightest part is also where that sharpness is in the red, pinkish tone down at the left. Once again, hooray for the black background. Okay. Uh, this is very nice. I think it's a little bit overexposed, uh, but this, as usual, uh, fire is very hard to shoot. Um, and so it's really not, it, not too important that it was overexposed because you've done what I think you were trying to show the viewer. Um, it's very true to life. I think you can almost smell the wood burning and the crackling of the kindling down there. Um, I like the lines of the wood. Uh, they take you all the way through the uh, picture frame, uh, which is, is uh, good. Uh, everything looks quite natural except for the exposure part. Uh, and you might try doing something with that with uh, Photoshop or Lightroom and see if you like it any better. You may not, but okay. I'm assuming this is a hot burner and it's under glass, uh, electric probably, but I thought this was also very creative. Number one, it's taken uh, from a slant angle, not straight on, which makes it more interesting. The glass that it's under uh, makes the whole thing more interesting too. And the leading lines, there's two of them really, the red one coming from the top left that takes you all around everywhere. And then the dark one, I'm not too sure what that is, but it leads you to the center. Um, and so I do think you see everything and it's, um, um, it makes it a little bit more interesting with that middle, had that all been dark, it wouldn't have been as, as nice. I do think it was exposed very well and the composition, not like I mentioned, is very good. Um, this one looks quite hot and I'm glad that the um, photographer didn't have the whole white sun there because it would have been uh, so, so dominant in this picture. Uh, I felt the heat as I looked at the sun and my eye then went to the right. But when I got to the beach part, I got a different feeling. Uh, and so I'm kind of wondering if you need that person and the dog there. Uh, it was a uh, you could crop that out and still have the idea of heat and sand and um, sun. Uh, but as a picture without that theme, that's very nice. And I like the fact that the person and the dog are sharp. And I think that's it. This one I thought was lovely, uh, simple in some ways. It's amazing that the light rays covered so much. Once again, I like the... Um, cropping or the panoramic look to it. Um, and the fact that these little bushes are in the front bottom gives you an idea of the perspective here. Uh, that 
part was good also. Um, it's interesting how the the leading lines from the sun rays point right to the sand and then you end up going down because it's different to those bushes. Very nice composition, undulating sand. Uh, the one thing I had was on the top right, I wish I could point to it, but you see on the, the mount there, there's a black, I mean, a dark spot and it made me, yes, makes me wonder if it's not a camera spot because it doesn't look like a sand one. And if so, that needs to be fixed. Another fire shot. The wood is sharp. Um, and here again, uh, you've, you've caught some nice color. I'm glad that you caught the coals down at the bottom and then the bluish grays of the, of the wood uh, are nice. Once again, the, it's interesting about the, um, the wood that goes straight up the, at an angle, but it's balanced and given the place to stand with the bottom one. Um, so you don't feel like it's just coming out of nowhere. Uh, I thought that was done pretty well. The colors are particularly different. It, this is an interesting place. I, uh, I think those people are having fun. I like the fact that the man, there's one man in here that is walking out of it, which gives it some, uh, some more interest. Um, everything is sharp from the foreground to the background, which is not simple either. And the, the steam looks pretty white, but I've wondered if it was a tad overexposed, uh, underexposed. And you might try lightening that up to see if you like it a little better. Once again, there's a spot down there in the middle bottom, just as the, uh, yes, as the water turns blue. I don't think that's part of the water. And if it's camera, it, you'll want to fix that. And, and the same may be true on the far left. I can't quite tell. Uh, but the bottom one is the one that I am more concerned about. The, clean the camera and fix that on the image. But it's a nice job. These folks look real happy. Um, and it certainly talks about uh, the heat of the hot tub and the coolness of the drink, um, uh, much less the water behind them. The water behind them is a little bit off being straight, but you don't pay much attention to it. It's blurry, the people are the subject um, and they're, they're fun. Uh, and that's the part that's sharp and, and done well. I think that was about all. Yeah, okay. Uh, first place I put um, the burning memories, the letter and the candle. Second place was the hot burner, the red down, yeah. And third place was the rays of sun over the sand. And this one called for a honorable, honorable mention. mention. Yes, ma'am. So I chose the blue lagoon or whatever that is, the steamy lagoon or something. That's honorable mention. All right. Let's see. Honorable mention tonight goes to Bernice. Yeah, that's the blue lagoon in the middle of uh, February. <laughs> Where is that? Iceland. Iceland. Wow. <laughs> very good congratulations thank you <clears throat> third place tonight we have dan i don't see him online dan gerard is with his image of white sands moving on congratulations dan second place goes to tim he is here yeah so i'm you're exactly right that's the shot of the burner on our stove and it's got like this frosted glass over it. Um, I had frankly not noticed that black line before until I took this picture and saw it and thought just like you did, it'd be interesting. I put the leading line coming in from the corner. So thank you for your comments. <laughs> You're welcome. Very nice. That would make a good abstract. <laughs> <laughs> Very. I forgot to mention. And the creative first place winner tonight, Sarah Pennington. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I was trying to come up with ideas for this contest. And I'm pretty sure that my inspiration for this was that I got a Hamilton song stuck in my head. But I, it was fun to take. Um, interesting to take because I was laying things on fire. But, you know, <laughs> it, it worked fine. Yeah, yeah, Tim, she's not saying she's a pyromaniac, is she? <laughs> we were a little concerned about her burning the house down. <laughs> Just a little too excited about those flames. But anyway, well she done, Sarah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she is. Very creative. Well done. Congratulations. All right. So move this down into the best in show. Intermediate monochrome. Show everyone the images real quick. Okay, back to the first image. This collection of irons is quite interesting. And everything is sharp, and detailed. It looks to me like the exposure is done well. You've got the full range of black to white. Uh, I like the fact that the top frame and the right side frame are straight, as well as the uh, shelves. The only sadness for me in this was that you couldn't see all of the bottom shelf. Um, and so I and and particularly when you ended up in that left corner with the brightest part of the image, just about. Um, and that's where your eyes going to land and perhaps stay. Uh, otherwise, I thought it was just a very interesting shot and certainly uh, falls into the theme, not something I would have thought about. Nice job. I'm assuming this is boiling water, um, but I don't know. And it doesn't matter. Uh, I think it's pretty cool, actually, in black and white. Um, a lot of it is not sharp, but you can sort of pull out the little bubbles and see that they are until you get down to the bottom third of the picture. So my suggestion would be to crop off some of that bottom part so that you're because it's got the brightest part. So your eye goes to that bright part in the middle and then might find something sharp. Um, so play with your cropping on that and see how, how you like it. Um, but it was, it was a good idea and very nicely done. Another creative one with the warming of hands uh, was a good concept. I like the fact that the hands are not sharp. Um, because uh, it, it just wouldn't have been as interesting and maybe it's true to life. You don't put your hands too close to that frame, flame. Um, the slight lean of the table, I, I, maybe it's a round table and that's probably why, but it made me wonder if that candle was actually um, straight in the, in the picture. I do think it was wonderfully sharp, very well exposed, and a nice job. And the black background is perfect again. It, I haven't thought of gun smoke in ages. Uh, and I also like the fact that uh, this uses the heme theme with the smoke, but also uh, people use the term heat for guns. Uh, which is not something I would have thought about, but I can I can hear James Cagney saying, "Did you bring the heat?" Um, in a very old movie, which many of you might not have ever seen, but it, this was very creative. The gun part is sharp. Um, the smoke from it is done nicely. I think the composition is is very good. Um, you go right through the picture space very nicely, and in this case, you've got the opposite. You've got the silhouette with the white background. My only suggestion would be if you did this again to take the wedding ring out, otherwise it may be telling a story here with the wedding ring on um, that you didn't really intend. So that was very nice and interesting and a good job. 
I'll tell you, Marianne, I hadn't even thought of that until you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> this one uh, is uh, very nice. Uh, the, the lights on the front of it kept it from uh, being, it allowed the rest of it to be a little underexposed, but it doesn't matter because you didn't need the back of that train or the tunnel. Uh, you can, uh, what to me is the best part of this is the front of the engine and the um, heat of, of, of it right above. Um, as a result, I had a hard time finding that heat at first. And part of it was because I was still looking for sharpness up at the top. You might want to consider cropping a little bit of that top off so that you see that heat uh, waving stuff yeah, right a little bit easier. Um, if you like that, that's good. If you don't, it's certainly not necessary, but it was one of the thoughts I had. I like the angle and the composition uh, and the sharpness of this is excellent. Okay. I never thought of a hot air balloon either when it came to heat. So um, this is a very nice shot. Nice shot. Uh, I like the fact that there is a uh, the front part of the balloon covering the top of the frame. If you'd been under the balloon and gotten the whole thing, maybe it would have been round. But I like the fact that it, what this does, the front of the balloon that comes down in front of the flame, it darkens that area and keeps your eye going back down, uh, which is a good compositional thing. Um, it's nice and sharp, everything in it's sharp. Uh, it was, I'm glad you didn't go down any further on the bottom. Uh, that would have been a distraction. Nicely done. Okay. With six images in this competition, we get first, first and second. First place was the gun smoke. And the second place was the uh, hot air balloon. Okay. Let's see who this is. Bernice. Yes, every year up here, we have a, a, a balloon uh, fest and got there in the morning and it was too cloudy and too windy to take off, but they did a, uh, um, a tethered and so I was able to get up underneath it, but it was too hot to get right underneath it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. Well done. Thank you. First place with 357 heater, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Yeah, that's, um, it was actually composite shot of the smoke was done separately and then composited on. Um, I <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and, and I had not thought, I, I had noticed the ring and thought it looked strange, but but you were spot on with what you said. That if I do it again, I'll definitely have to, to have that removed. So thank you. And you can remove it from this one, actually. You know. Yeah, yeah, I guess I could have if I would have tried, but I just hadn't thought of it, but okay. Cool. Well done, congratulations, Tim. And experience color. Okay, we're back in the beginning. I found this one interesting because it was done with a slower shutter speed and therefore you see the movement of the, and the softness of what a fire can give you. Um, and uh, there's nothing really sharp in here, but the overall view of it gives you a very soft, warm feeling. Uh, the only real problem I think with this one was the, um, 
No, it wasn't. I beg your pardon. But yes, the reflections on the glass. You can see it throughout. Um, and the only one that really kind of bothered me was in the upper right. But, the, you know, the, it, they're not distracting. Uh, and there was probably no choice in what you did. I like the angle of, of it, too. It's not straight on. And it gives you a nice angle of the wood and the softness of the flames at the same time. Uh, nicely done. This was also very creative, um, with the, particularly with the fork. And the fact, here's an example of using color uh, and black and white. Uh, so we certainly know what the subject is. Uh, I thought it was uh, extremely um, creative and done well. I would like to see the right side down there at the bottom of the right side a little darker, just like the left side is, because you almost follow the shirt down rather than going into dark. So if you might darken under his arm on that left right corner, yes, that area. I think that would look a little better. And you could do it for the top right too, but um, I, I was much more thinking of the bottom right. Um, and it would also cause, I think, the left hand to show up more like the other one does. But the fork is is uh, really cool. And I just now see the title just too hot. Um, very nice. Good job. I wasn't sure what this is. Uh, and now that I read the title, I, I, I still don't quite know, except that it's metal. Um, now that I, I didn't know that before. I like very much the colors of this one. Um, there's no burned out places, really. I like the fact that the metal rod that it is on comes from the bottom right, and you can see that with the reflection. And, and that's all sharp. The gentleman back in the back, I didn't even notice that right away at first. And when you do, it makes it an awful lot more interesting. Uh, I, I, had, I didn't know what he was doing, but it was an interesting um, sharp, sharp where it needs to be and interesting and not sharp where uh, it exemplifies what you're trying to say as well as makes it more interesting. And the black background there again, you know, just almost has to be, it's excellent. Uh, the heat in this, of course, is the roasting of the marshmallows. But the subject of this is not the roasting of the marshmallows as much as it is the little girl and the mother. Uh, it's a wonderful candid shot. Uh, it makes you wonder what they were laughing at, but the little girl is um, priceless. Um, and even leaning back from her mother, I don't, I don't, maybe it was too hot there, I don't know. Uh, it would even be a cute candid if you took the gentleman out and just did the two, the two in the middle and the right. Uh, everything is sharp, very nicely um, composed, um, very nice exposure. Um, and so it, it was a good job. Cropping was good too. This one told me that the, you know, you're in the heat um, and how much fun this little girl was having in the water. I like the little children on the bottom right that who are looking at her. In this particular case, there's an awful lot of background that is of the same tone and same colors and even brighter than the little girl is. Uh, I would crop some of that down and I would burn in or something to get that background. Uh, the, the diaper bag or whatever the second man is carrying is brighter than anything else in the picture as well as the far left. There's something very white there. As far as the little girl is concerned, it's wonderful. Um, she is having a good time. I did have another suggestion for the background too. If you can't tone it down entirely, you might try blurring some of it and see if the little girl wouldn't pop out of there better. Okay. I like this uh, because uh, it shows so much color. Uh, it's hard to do that with just the flame, but this has the glass. Uh, as well as the blower, I guess you would call that. Um, nice composition. 
uh, and you can see where the the heat is coming from and where it's hitting right on it and then as you've got soft uh, soft part at the top and the flame but the bottom is sharp so it gives you uh, a nice perspective um, I don't know that you need the dark thing on the left in the middle um, that balances the right hand side but it's sort of I find that distracting and it's not sharp uh, it wouldn't matter I don't think uh, to the idea of the theme here to have cropped that out but that was a very nice job and I love the colors this is really sad but extremely pretty uh, I was impressed by the fact that it was sharp all the way through until you get to the very very distant and it starts getting blurry so that gives you an idea of how vast this area is um, and how far back it goes I like again the size of the image I think it worked well the lines of the lighter color against the dark um, cooler parts of the volcano uh, are very nice it's almost abstract um, I found that it was a very nice job I thought this was a lovely uh, shot it gives a nice warm feeling to it a uh, comfy kind of a feeling um, I like the reflection on the top handle of the lantern uh, I think that really uh, is good because there is light coming from somewhere other than that flame um, it was a, a very nice composition uh, as well as um, the sharpness of the foreground here and of the flame itself um, I like also the composition where you didn't have that you've turned it at such an angle that you caught the reflection at the top as well as didn't have that bar of the lantern right in the middle nice job fireworks can be hard in this case it certainly does look like they're hot uh, in the heat I like the, the composition of this with the two centers, the yellow portion being nicely composed and sharp. Uh, the sharpness goes out to the ends in a lot of areas. So that that keeps you going, your eye going around the frame and through it uh, so that it, the composition truly helps here, especially in the edges and in the center. Nice color. This was interesting. Um, I, I had a hard time figuring out what it was. Uh, and but I did try to read and I see that it's Marine veterans and it's a uh, um, I, I found out later it was hot streak number two. Um, it definitely shows the heat as well as the flame. And that's interesting to get both of those. Um, and I like very much the fact that it showed all of the flame on the far left. Uh, it wasn't cropped out. And there's more heat there, of course, as well. Even above the first part, the engine part of the red truck, you can see the heat. Uh, that was just very nicely done. You left enough room for that truck to keep moving, uh, which was also good. The image size uh, as a panorama made a lot of sense to me um, and uh, it was a very nice job we're back to the beginning we are so with 10 entries we get a double check i believe first second third and third yep uh first place was that hot streak the last one yeah second place was the glass blowing one right and third place was the volcano okay third place winner tonight robert miller robert did come off a of mute not yet hearing oh, him yes hello <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure I'd actually unmuted it. Uh, yeah, so this was a, a um, volcano 
in Iceland taken a couple of summers ago, back when that volcano had erupted and we were there to watch the fields of lava come pouring down the mountain. It was just amazing. We were there for several hours and the lava flow just kept coming and it kept filling the valley that it was pouring into. And it was just, just an amazing sight. Well done. Second place tonight, also Robert Miller. It, this was uh, in a glass blowing factory uh, outside of Venice in Italy on a vacation that my wife and I took a few years ago. And uh, it was just amazing to watch these, these people working and shaping glass and using the fire to, to add the streaks of red that they were melting onto the base glass. It was, it was hot in there. <laughs> I can't imagine having that as your job. Congratulations on that. And first place tonight, Ken Lane. I don't see Ken online. But congratulations to Ken. Go ahead and move that down to best in show. And moving into experience monochrome. This one has a good exposure. Whoops, I forgot you were going through them. Go ahead, sorry. Okay, back to the beginning. This one has uh, good exposure for uh, the dark and the light. Uh, it perhaps was a little overexposed when it comes to um, the bottom left, particularly. Um, you can read the, the juxtaposition between the Pyrex and the boiling water, uh, which made it rather interesting. I had a little trouble with it because um, it, ha not, it has a nice composition to it. There's no question, a little bit of Pyrex, you know what, what's happening here. The bottom portion is a reflection look, or not a reflection, you're looking through the glass that looks like a window. Um, and I, I don't know, there's no way to fix that. And it's blurry enough that you don't really uh, pay much attention to it, but it does take up an awful lot of the picture frame. So that a little bit of cropping or standing in a slightly different position when you took the, the picture, uh, move to the right or something a little bit, uh, might have helped. Um, there's only a little bit uh, that is sharp in this, and um, and that's mostly the numbers and the Pyrex, and not the water. So I had some concern about that. You might want to change the uh, aperture or something. But a nice idea. This one has amazing detail and it, everything is beautifully sharp. Uh, it's interesting to me, if I had not known the theme of this, I wouldn't have known that that was an oven and glass blowing uh, in black and white. It's just uh, so different. Um, I might've been able to figure it out, but at first glance, I certainly didn't. I do like the detail. I like the idea that there is an action, something's getting ready to happen here. I think the top left where it has been cropped or moved a little bit needs to get that white out of there, right? Um, there's wonderful tonal range on this. They've got the brightest white and the darkest black. Uh, and I, uh, the detail is just marvelous, um, very good. I like this one as well. Uh, excellent detail again. Um, the white was not, uh, easy to discern. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that exactly right. The black, the, uh, I'm gonna start this over again. The detail of this one is very, very good. Where I had some concern, and the steam is marvelous. So the composition is, is quite good. The leading lines from both directions um, at the bottom are very nice. Uh, you can see that the kettle is, uh, over the fire, which is also helpful. Um, my only concern with this really uh, was the fact that you can 
almost tell what that reflection is on the right hand side. Uh, and it made me want to figure it out. Uh, I can see a hallway, et cetera. So about the only thing you could do about that is to use a scrim or put something in the back that you wouldn't be able to recognize, uh, uh, you know, something dark or light or something that uh, would keep you from trying to figure it out. And that or moving it slightly in a different direction, but that might uh, ruin your composition. So I'm not too sure exactly what you want to do, perhaps even toning that down so it wouldn't be part of the brightest. It matches the uh, steam, so uh, you see it very readily. Very nice. This one, Into the Oven, I see the title now, uh, I believe is underexposed. Um, and it needs to have a little bit more contrast. Uh, I can tell that something looks like it was getting ready to be cooked or something, but I, I really could not determine what this was. Uh, and the fact that so much of it is dark, um, I, I wasn't even sure if that was food or, or what it was. So those were my concerns. The leading lines on the right-hand side are good and the top left as well. Uh, and the sheet, cookie sheet or whatever it is that it's on, it keeps your eye moving. Um, but I did have problem with the exposure and uh, the sharpness is good in the front, but it might've been nice to have a little bit more of it sharp. Well, here's hot streak again. Um, I like this angle. And once again, the total flame is in it, which is quite nice, very sharp. Uh, coming at us at, at that angle is quite nice. I like the softness in the background from uh, the smoke or whatever, but it makes this truck stand out really, really much with the detail. Um, and if that's important, I would I'd be inclined to blur uh, the right hand side because it those little bushes there match the sharpness of the truck. So if you blur those, I think you would find that it's a, a, a little bit better. Very, very nice. And I really like the composition as well as the exposure on this. So ten, no, five entries. So we get a first and second place. Right. First place was the teapot boiling steam. And second place was the hot streak. Okay, hot streak, I believe is Ken. Yep, Ken Lane again, who still has not joined us, it appears. So congratulations to Ken. And first place, Robert Miller. So I was struggling to come up with a black and white composition for this, um, this theme. And my wife was making tea one afternoon last week and I saw the steam coming out of the kettle and I thought, Oh, that would work. And so I played around with a bunch of different um, angles and compositions. And your comment about the bright spot on the right of the tea kettle is a great comment. That's actually the kitchen cabinetry in, <laughs> uh, in our kitchen. And now that you pointed out, of course, I can't unsee it. And so I <laughs> need to go back in and just darken that so that it's not um, so white. Congratulations, Robert. I'm going to move that down to the best in show. Okay. So now you must choose a best in show. Uh, I chose the burning memories, the one in the center. Sarah. The pyromania pays off. <laughs> Say that three times real fast. <laughs> Congratulations, Sarah. Thank you. All right. That is it for tonight. Marianne, thank you so much for your wonderful feedback and your efforts and, and providing us some, you know, some great feedback on the images. Definitely well appreciated. Um, and does anybody have any questions, comments for Marianne while she's here? Give everyone another moment to find the mute button. Thank you all for inviting me. I enjoyed your photos. Um, 
And I, the theme was quite interesting. I never knew there were so many ways to show heat. <laughs> it was quite good. Definitely some creativity on display here tonight. Again, Marianne, thank you so much for your, for your comments, your feedback. Uh, and that will wrap up this competition of images of or about heat. Looking forward to seeing everyone at Mid-Atlantic Photo Visions next week and up, coming up for our next meeting with David Luria in two weeks. Until next time, see you. Good night.